in 2007, news broke about a bombshell story in Virginia involving an NFL superstar by the name of Michael Vick, who was allegedly involved in a dog fighting operation. Obviously, dog fighting is illegal. Um, when the news broke, it was completely shocking because for those of you who knew Michael Vick, right? I grew up as a child watching Michael Vick. Football was Michael Vick, right? It was the Michael Vick experience. He was one of the NFL's best quarterbacks. He was unbelievable. So the fact that he was in this type of a situation was a little bit crazy. So from there, it was decided, so in this case, there were over, I believe, 50 or 60 dogs that were uh, found at the complex, right? So let's, let's also keep in mind, there were dozens upon dozens of dogs that were killed during this time, maybe more. When the police got there, they saw dogs that were hanging from chains, that they saw dogs that were buried in the ground. It was a horrific and really terrible sight for those that were able to see it. So then after sentencing, the question came up, what do we do with the dogs? There's about 50 or 60 dogs that remain. What do we do with them? And the norm at the time, right, in these types of cases, was that the dogs were to be euthanized. They were to be put to, to, to sleep forever. It's a humane way of yeah. putting those to not be living anymore. And this was not just something that the courts decided. This was all animal activist groups, PETA, every single group around the world recognized that this was the right thing to do. Why might you ask? Because these are trained killers. You can't have trained killers roaming around in society. They're too dangerous. So everybody agreed the right thing to do is to put them to sleep. There was one group called the Best Friends Animal Shelter located in Utah. So keep in mind, this is happening in Virginia. A dog shelter based out of Utah called up the courts and they begged, please give us an opportunity to work with the dogs. We know that we can do something that will help save their lives. Please give us a chance. And the courts agreed. And the next thing that I saw as HBO Sports was doing a documentary on this story, like almost brought me to tears. When you see the work that these human beings did with these dogs, they showed video footage of these human beings that were willing to sleep in the same bed as a trained dog killer. They showed video footage of them driving them in their cars. They hugged them. They kissed them. They showed the utmost love and compassion for those that society wrote off as unsavable. And my question to the boys in this room is the following. What skill set does an individual need, right, in order to help me feel something for another human being? Does anybody know what this word is called? Henry. Empathy. Empathy. Good. Anybody else have a thought? Marco? Sympathy. Sympathy. So Marco said what I wanted you to say. Henry said what I didn't want you to say. So thank you, Henry, for jumping the gun a little bit. Does anybody know the difference between sympathy and empathy? There is a major distinction between the two. Motion. Empathy is when you can feel what other people are feeling, and sympathy is when you can feel that person. So in both cases, I feel for somebody else, in sympathy and empathy. But there's a major distinction that very few people know, and I want to uncover it today with everybody in this room. Raymond. Sympathy is when you can, you can relate with someone and feel bad for them because you've been in their position. Empathy is when you're when you're sympathizing with them, you're empathetic to them, like you're, you feel bad for them, you know what they're going through, you don't know what you're going through, but you still manage to see what they're thinking and get into their shoes, even though you have no experience with anyone's Excellent. 
Sympathy is the ability to feel because I've been in your shoes before. Empathy is I have no understanding of what you're going through, but I still feel the need to try to, exp to understand what it is that you're feeling because I want to feel it. Now, boys, I have a problem. We have a problem. And this is not just something that's about us. I think it's a worldwide problem because it's a bit scary that a bunch of human beings out in Utah have more empathy for dogs than I think we possess for the people within our own families, within our own respective community. Something's not right and it doesn't make sense to me. How could it be that Human beings are literally willing to put their lives on the line to save a dog that was written off by society as unsavable, but yet we sit here in our own comfort, in our own homes, and we fail to recognize the needs of those that are closest to us. So I want to bring a thought to our attention that may help explain a little bit of what I think is going on. You see, boys, we grow up, all of us, with certain teachings from the adults that are most responsible for us. So whether it's our parents, whether it's our teachers, our rabbis, whoever it may be. Police officers, U.S. court systems, right? Every single one of them focuses on one of two very necessary components that comes to learning what it is to be a human being. Because what happens when a child does something wrong? What's the first thing the parent says to their child? Marco? I'm grounded. Say you're sorry. I'm not mad, I'm just avoiding. Right? How many cases do we see where a kid does something wrong? Right? They didn't share a toy or they hit their sibling and the first thing the parent says is that's the wrong thing to do, say you're sorry. And then there's like this whole exchange where the kid says no. And the parent says yes. And the kid says no. Until finally the parent forcefully gets the child to kind of like shrug their shoulders and they're like, sorry. <laughs> now that's very important. I want to just acknowledge. It is very, very important when a parent teaches their child a behavior of what's socially acceptable when they commit a wrong. When you do something wrong, the behavior that you should demonstrate is to apologize. That's an appropriate behavior. But the problem is, does that child really understand the damage that they did? No. In fact, not only do they not understand how they wronged the other person, they now get more angry with that person because they now learn that this person caused me problems with my parent. Right? My stupid brother who wouldn't give me the stupid toy caused mommy to yell at me and tell me that I had to say sorry when I didn't want to say sorry. So the whole idea about us learning how to connect with others and to feel for others totally goes out the window because what happens, we are trained from a very young age that we need to say sorry, that we need to consider how we feel, right? What does a parent say? Look what you did! This is what you just did to make life a little bit uncomfortable for everybody. You did this. What's the purpose? What's going on? I'm only focusing on it from my perspective. I failed to instill this idea of empathy. That it's not about me. It's not about what I understand. It's not about my experiences. It's about my willingness to be vulnerable enough to say, I don't get what you're going through. I've never been a dog that's been victimized by the heinous crimes of these individuals located in Virginia. I don't know what it feels like, but I'm willing to step outside of who I am and attempt to understand how maybe this individual feels. And so boys, I want to challenge everybody. Because you know what? The excuse of, well, the adults in my life didn't train me, they don't fly by me. They don't fly for special individuals. You want to know why? Because if me having the ability to be my best self is contingent upon my parents or my adults to help me get there, that's a problem. Because that means that my life is in somebody else's hands. 
doesn't work for a special person. May work for an average person, not going to work for me. That's not the person that I want to be. So we need to start saying to ourselves, we need to impose change on ourselves. And so boys, I challenge you for at least the next week, learn what it means to empathize, not just sympathize. When you have experiences and exchanges with those around you, whether it's your family members, your friends, or even if it's somebody that you don't know, maybe there's a random stranger walking on the street and there's an exchange that you have with them. I challenge you to do the following. Whether it's in that moment or afterwards, as you reflect, ask yourself, how did that other person feel? I'm not saying save the world. I'm not saying say sorry. I'm not saying change any behaviors. I'm asking you to learn a very important life skill that is necessary for human beings to further their development within society. Because, boys, you don't know the power of empathy. We can literally save lives. For a bunch of dogs in Virginia who were coined as the victory dogs from the Michael Vick case, it literally was the difference between life and death. History and society told everybody that these dogs didn't stand a fighting chance. Love and empathy said otherwise. Let's try to do the same. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.